Hi there, my name is Matt Osgood. I've recently started using a Presona Studio Live Series 3 desk, the 32SX, here in my home studio. Now this is an awesome piece of gear. It functions as a mixer, as an audio interface, and as a control surface, but with all of that power comes a certain amount of complexity. So I've put together a series of videos which will show you how to get the desk set up, how to set it up for monitor mixes, how to use it for recording, and as a control surface for Presona Studio One recording software. There is loads to cover, so let's get started. So this is the desk, exactly as it was out of the box. I have reset it to the factory settings. I have connected it to my PC via USB, and also via Ethernet into the control socket on the back. Um, I've connected my monitor speakers to the monitor outs, which are on uh, TRS jacks. I've got some music playing from my PC and nothing is coming through. So let's set that up first. Now by default, every input on the desk is set to analog, but of course I'm connected to my PC via USB, so I need to change that setting. Now the stereo out from your PC or your Mac, if you're say playing music from Spotify or YouTube, comes into the desk on the tape in channel. Now at the moment I'm looking at channels 1 to 24, so I need to press the next button to get to the next bank of faders, and here is my tape channel. Now this little icon here, the top left of the touchscreen, selects the input. So if I press that, you can see I've got icons for analog, for the AVB network, for USB, and for the SD card. And if I select USB, then it selects channels 37 and 38. We need to remember those numbers for later on. And you can see there is now level showing on the channel. So if I bring the fader up, and then if I turn my monitor volume knob up over here, And there we go. So there's additional options for monitoring. If you hit the edit button here, if I select monitor, and you can see I can monitor the main outputs, the solo bus, the tape inputs, or any one of the 16 flex mix buses. You've got the same options for headphones. So if I wanted my headphones to simply duplicate what's coming through the control room speakers, then I'd select main. There is a lot more flexibility though available in terms of headphone monitoring, which we'll come on to in a later video. So, we've got audio coming out of the computer, through the desk, into my monitor speakers, but I need to make some changes in Studio One as well to fit with the changes I've just made to the desk. So here we are in Studio One. I've got a previous mix down imported, but nothing else in the song at the moment. Now if I go to Studio One, Options, Audio setup, you can see my audio device is set to Studio Live Series 3, sample rate 48k, device block size 128 samples. Um, now I find that setting absolutely fine for recording virtual instruments. When you're recording real instruments or vocals, latency isn't an issue at all. So you'll see in a later video when I show you how to set up monitoring through the desk rather than through Studio One. Now I need to go down to Song Setup, Audio I.O. Setup, and then go to the Outputs tab here, and you can see that the main output from Studio One is set to 1 and 2 at the moment, but I'm going to send it through the tape in channel that we've just set up. So I need to scroll along to 37 and 38 and hit Apply. And whilst we're here, I also want to create a mono output which is just for the click track. It's really helpful to have that on a separate fader. It makes it a lot easier to set up different amounts of click in different monitor mixes as well, if that's needed. So to do that, I click Add Mono, creates this Sub 1 bus. I'm going to rename that. And I'm going to select Channel 24. It could be any channel, really. I just need to remember it and hit apply and that's done. Now I also want to keep these settings for new songs so to do that I click make default and then yes. Now this doesn't change the settings for any songs that I have already saved but if I were to open an old song and I wanted to switch to these settings then I could just click the reset to default button here. And now if I click OK and come back to the mixer window, you can see the main outs are now set to channel 37 and 38. 
Also, if I select the Outputs button over here, it brings up my click bus, which is set to channel 24. And then I need to deselect the little metronome icon here and select the metronome icon here. And it now means that when the metronome is playing, it will only go out of the click bus. It won't go out of my main output. But this click bus is not currently set up on the desk, so we need to go back and do that now. So what I want to do is create a bank of faders that has my mics and other inputs over here, starting at channel 1, my Studio One outputs here in the middle, and then on this model of the desk, if I hit the AUX inputs, it brings up my effects returns on this right-hand bank of faders, which is really helpful. So I'm going to do this using the user bank, which gives you total flexibility to create a bank of faders showing whatever channels you want in any order. So I hit user, then select here, and I use the value encoder to scroll down to the tape in channel. So I select that, hit done, and then hit select on the channel. And this little icon here brings up settings. So I am going to name this PC. There we go. And next to it, I want my click channel. So I hit select on that channel. And we set it to channel 24, so I hit channel 24, and done. Select that channel. Now, as you can see, it's still set to the analog input, so I could change that using the touchscreen as I did before, or you can also just use the four buttons in the input section here. If I just press USB, then that's done. It's set to USB channel 24. And now if I go back into my Studio One song, where I just had that stereo mix file, and hit play, it's coming through on my PC channel here. And my click channel is right next to it. So there we go. Now just to say as well, if you preferred, you could connect your speakers to the main outputs from the desk rather than the monitor outs. So if you followed everything else in this video but you did that, then your speaker volume would be controlled by the master fader here. You may find that more convenient to use rather than the monitor volume knob over there. That's obviously up to you. And the final thing that I want to do in this video is to save this desk routing as my default project. Projects for Studio Live Desks contain all the global settings and routing for the desk, which includes all of the changes that we've made during this video. So to save that, I hit the Scenes button, then Store on the first empty location. I'll name this Default. Hit Enter, and we're done. Scenes, over on the other side of the screen, store things like fader levels, EQ, compression settings, and so on. You'd use scenes, for example, in a live show where, say, an electric guitarist switches guitars partway through. We want to save the more fundamental routing changes we've made, so we're using a project. And that's it for this video. I really hope that was helpful. In the next video, we'll set up some inputs to actually start recording some music, and we'll also use the power of the Studio Live Desk to set up individual monitor mixes that will help get the best out of our musicians. Thanks for watching.